The need for monitoring Applied Behavior Analysis Services, ABA. What is ABA? Applied Behavior Analysis, ABA, also called Behavior Engineering, is a scientific technique concerned with applied empirical approach based upon the principles of changing behavior. The behavior must be significant to the individual, family and society at large. ABA has been utilized in a range of areas including applied animal behavior, school-wide positive behavior support, classroom instruction, structured and naturalistic early behavior intervention for autism, pediatric feeding therapy, rehabilitation of brain injuries, dementia, fitness training, substance abuse, phobia, tics and organizational behavior management. Presently in the United States, ABA is a medical intervention and it can only be applied by persons who are trained and certified in the application. With the alliance of other behavior analysts worldwide, we have now March 20th as the World Applied Behavior Analysis Alliance. What does this all mean? The, the implication is that if an individual has a neurodevelopmental disorder, you must put in the intervention that is done through evidence-based practices so that data can be taken to determine the effectiveness of that treatment. If this is not done, the condition becomes complicated and this is where the line between duty of care and negligence starts becoming blurred. Currently, the prevalence of children with neurodevelopmental disorders is 1 in 44 and most of these children are being attended to by unqualified persons or the person's license are not being supervised. What licenses do we have that are applicable in Nigeria currently? There are three foreign licenses bodies currently in Nigeria. You have the IBCCES, the BCBA, the QABA. There is a chain of supervision with all these bodies and this is not being applied. Technicians, assistants, program developers all report to the developer who need to understand that individuals with neurodevelopmental disorders have medical conditions that deserve the most effective treatment and, this, and if this is not done, we only make the condition worse. These are lifetime disorders and we need to give the individuals the best opportunity for the most beneficial quality of life. It is ethical and morally wrong to keep children with such conditions under the care of quacks and this, is, this needs to stop. Individuals with this condition have other medical conditions that are serious and can result in the reaction and the child might die in the care of, his, of the school. We really need to stop this practice. It is not fair to the individuals or the parents. Learning supports in schools should be monitored by ABA consultants and not just anybody who has a passion to work with a vulnerable child or group of individuals who have neurodevelopmental disorders. Well, uh, it's quite a lot. You know, <laughs> we always emphasize you are what you're trying to say is um, the emphasis should be on getting people, professionals that are well studied or well trained to handle this issue. No, it should not just be based on passion. No, I have passion to take care of uh, children with special needs or persons with special needs. Mm. Let me go into it. You might cause more harm than good yeah. in the process. Yes, so basically now that it's a medical condition, the truth of the matter is that if a child gets worse under your care, you can actually go to prison for it. Huh. So schools really do need to understand that these children are really ill. They are medically ill. You know, people see these children as not being ill because they come to school and, you know, they behave they almost, appear normal. they appear normal. But each of these conditions have comorbid other conditions like seizures and stroke. Wow. So, so I, want, I want to find out why is, why is most of the burden being placed on the schools? Are these boarding schools or day schools? Day schools. Well, the parent who, who has a child, mm. or, who has that condition, and who takes the child to a particular school. I'm trying to see why the school should bear that responsibility. Especially when it's not a boarding facility where you know the child has to be there um, continuously. That's a very good, very, very good question. The truth of the matter is that if a child has a medical diagnosis, why are you allowing the child in your school in the first place? Exactly. Why are you allowing the child? All should be responsible. Well, I That's think, I mean, do we even have special needs schools? So, I, I mean, there may be the odd one, but 
even the special needs schools, mm. who monitors them? Yeah. What's, the, um, what's the standard or the parameters that the Ministry of Education has set to say that mm. if you're going to set up this kind of school, then this is what you should have? Oh. And who is making sure that they have it? Yeah. Okay, so the answer to that is that for the first 1,000 days of a child's life with a delay, they have to have the opportunity to be trained in mainstream education. Once a child gets to about seven, then you can now start streamlining into special needs schools. The challenge we have is that most parents don't want their children to be in special needs schools because, because of stigma, 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 stigma and kindling. Awareness, lack of awareness. Good. And the special needs schools that we have are um, overburdened with children that mm -hmm. can never be intervened. Yeah. ABA is for intervention. Intervention means to restore to an extent so that the impact of the disorder is not going to be um, it's not going to be a detriment to the child further on in life. You have to properly manage the disorder. Yes. yes. So, so you I, I want to find out because it, it's a very interesting script. I'm trying to find out if that is that a rule for you didn't mention any is that what's the Ministry of Health doing? Are they working with any development partners to address this issue? Because it's quite very this ABA whole concept is quite uh, is new. new to me <laughs> and I imagine for most of others it's also very new to them and so I don't know. The truth of the matter is that it's it's not a new concept it's just been taken at a higher level okay. so uh, you know when you go to school and you read special education to some extent you'll be taught ABA but the empirical part of ABA has gone out of the framework of school and has now stepped into the hands of medical for Nigeria purposes, it's best for us to start with the Ministry of Education because they are the ones totally responsible for the school settings. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to take it through the Ministry of Health, they've got so many other things. But we can also approach the Ministry of Health for them to, 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 um, to push screening. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, well, what we do is that we've done the reverse. We are screening in schools okay. to help the children to be identified on time because to we can't the wait. Identify the children on time. Yes, because we can't wait. If we're going to wait for the medical profession to take this up, then we're going to have, I mean, one in 44. Yes. That's a lot. I think our things. problem majorly in Nigeria is number one, awareness. Continu education continue lack education. Lack Public awareness. We are quick to judge, stigmatize, and discard. Mm -hmm. Number two, inclusion. Not just yeah. inclusion, intentional inclusion mm -hmm. from systemic point of view and government reinforcing it. You want to build a school. You talk about special needs school. It's not easy running a special needs school. No, but absolutely. let's even assume you have just a school for everyone. What efforts are you making to include everyone with different health challenges or whatever to be part of it, to get the best out of your school? Well, Being enforced by the government. That's yeah, what it's ought to be. Good. But the pro challenge is that, and I still go back to the fact that schools don't appreciate how ill these children are. If they understood how ill these children are, I know a lot of schools, good schools, that are ready to put in protocols to help. Mm. Do you understand? So I don't see a passionate um, educator knowing what we are advocating now will sit down and take those children on without the support of consultants. Okay. Okay. So I would like to ask Helen, what kind of, um, do you have the manpower? to monitor these things it's to implement so for me it comes down to implementation, implementation. what's the plan how are we planning capacity to implement capacity building because schools at the moment do have people monitoring these children but those people are not being supervised mm. so the, the 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 bridge is already there it's just for us to make it solid. And the, mm. that's where the government has to come in. Uh, for me, Ministry for of Health. Me, for uh, Ministry me. of Education, collaboration with Ministry of Health. Just what about you, just about him. Speaking from a legal point of view, you mentioned something about negligence and duty of care. Yes. So I think I would like to see where a parent who goes to court to enforce the <laughs> breach of the duty of, of, of care by the schools, mm. and let's see what the courts how do we interpret The problem that is that no parent wants to be so, the I one. Mean, so there appears to be a conspiracy of it's silence. Silence. Yes. I mean, like we all know that 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 so yeah. everything yeah. else. I mean, there's a conspiracy of silence. No one wants to talk. No one wants to be the one that is singled out. And wow. that's really wow. sad. Wow. And they're dying in silence. 
There it is. Okay, after the break, we are going to go into a very, very interesting topic, and I would totally advise you to remain here. <laughs> 